In the fight against the opioid epidemic, the painful and widespread impact on our state and its residents persists. That's despite long-standing efforts to turn the tide on the number of overdose deaths experienced across New Jersey every year. Well, efforts that have been bolstered by more federal money and better education about the dangerous cocktails of drugs available on the streets. Statistically, new statewide figures out today show fatal overdoses are beginning to decline, but in its place is a troubling new trend. Senior correspondent Joanna Gagas reports. We have a long way to go and one overdose is, is too many, certainly, but we are trending down this year. There's no world in which 2,900 projected overdose deaths is considered good news, but for state law enforcement officials, it's a signal that just maybe the needle is moving on the opioid epidemic. We should get under 2,900 um, for the first time since 2017. So again, a, a little bit of a glimmer of hope there in this uh, otherwise tragic epidemic. The most recent numbers came out today in a webinar hosted by the Partnership for a Drug-Free New Jersey together with NJ Cares and the Office of New Jersey's Attorney General. If you go back 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we would lose, it was still tragic, but a couple hundred of people a year, we would die of an act, accidental overdose. So, you know, when we will we'll celebrate when that number gets down to zero. Robert Budsock runs the treatment facility Integrity House in Newark, where he says it's clear that state and federal dollars have made a difference recently, even if death rates remain alarmingly high year after year. In September, New Jersey received more than $66 million in federal funding, and another $641 million is coming to the state from the opioid settlement. The resources that we've thrown at this issue is that we've had a vast expansion of the distribution of Narcan throughout the state of New Jersey. Even specifically at Integrity House, every single person that leaves Integrity House has, and this is the patients that are there for treatment, they leave with a Narcan kit. Narcan reverses the effects of an overdose, and it's been widely distributed around the state, including now in emergency departments at RWJ Barnabas Health, an underwriter of NJ Spotlight News, which could be contributing to the nearly 7% projected decrease in deaths, says Michael Litterer. When you look at certain periods of time, in particular, April of 2020 to April of 2021, New Jersey was the only state in the country that actually saw a reduction in the number of overdose deaths, where many other states in the country were seeing dramatic increases. But drill down into those decreases and you quickly see it's not a victory. What we were seeing was a tremendous decrease amongst white residents of New Jersey, but a dramatic increase amongst black and Hispanic residents of New Jersey. The black population is disproportionately affected. The black population in the state of New Jersey, if they represent that number in 2020 was 12.4%. And you look at they're now 28% um, of the overdose deaths in 2022. So overall, yes, we saw successes, which I think is indicative of the state's funding and really a concerted effort to address substance use um, overall. But unfortunately, Within that success, we're seeing those disparities that we really have to focus on. One of the barriers to care, especially for communities of color, getting people to treatment facilities. So Integrity House in Newark and John Brooks in Atlantic City are launching mobile units that'll bring medication and other treatment offerings into the hardest hit parts of the cities. We'll identify the hot spots, and these hot spots will either be uh, areas of the city where there has been a lot of overdose deaths or overdose reversals. Also, where there's a lot of drug trafficking, we'll arrive at the mobile unit, we'll open it up. Well, you know, there's an awning on the unit that is, uh, you know, with some advertisement indicating that we're here to help. And we will go to the spots that are generally hard hit and reaching the people who really uh, don't have the access to services in the area where they live. The goal is to engage those residents, get them medication assisted treatment, build trust, and eventually get them into brick and mortar treatment centers. I'm Joanna Gagas, NJ Spotlight News.